I V M. Hey everybody, welcome to another week on the IVM Podcast Network. As I mentioned last week, we're going through this COVID-19 outbreak and because of that recording schedules, we're trying to keep them, but it's a little uneven at this point in time. Beg your intelligence. While you are stuck at home, I think one thing that might be interesting to do is maybe check out some of the complete series that we've done. The Kulaba Cartel, the Woody Woodpecker, Cricket Walla Chronicles. These are limited series that are complete. Might be a good time to check out with those. Also want to thank our sponsors this week, HDFC Life and Paytm Money. And with that, let me get you onto your show and uh, stay safe, everyone. Hello, listeners. Welcome to another lockdown episode of Agla Station Adulthood. You are here with your hosts, Ayushi and Ritasha. Now, Ritasha, how are you? I am well. Um, I got a feeling Ayushi has woken up today as an Orthodox Jewish character from uh, Hunters. I have been watching a lot of Hunters on Amazon Prime. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Al Pacino. It's nice to make your acquaintance. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I don't think my accent is necessarily like Jew from the shtetl kind of a thing. I think it's more um, Ural, Mountain, <laughs> Russian region. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I don't know all these areas you've just mentioned. Um, so I'm just going to say you sound like Al Bhai from Hunters. Al Bhai. <laughs> if anyone else is watching Hunters, um, let me know how you feel. I've been watching it with my parents. And while my father is fully okay with it, because, you know, he's a grown ass adult. My mother, on the other hand, has to put her face in pillows for certain scenes because she can't handle it. Um, and this kind of got me thinking is that I think as a generation, we are so okay with like extremities of violence or like absurd premises to shows and like people just murdering people or uh, I think just violence. Yeah, because 2020, there are no more rules. Yeah, and we are so used to it because of how much television we've watched over the last say maybe five years and with the advent of shows really coming out on uh, like, you know, networks like, HBO and Showtime and then, and then streaming platforms because they have the ability to do whatever they want and say whatever they want. It's yeah. like, we're so, we're desensitized. We're like, yeah, okay, yeah, he killed him. What, is, what, 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 why, why is this upsetting to you? He's bad guy, bad guy die. That's it. That's it. And then my mom just said, but how can you be so cruel? <laughs> like, it, it just got me thinking that I think we're just so okay with it. And people who don't watch a lot of television, which is my mom, in general, she doesn't watch. So shows like this. And so I, I don't think I'd ever introduce her to even a genre like Game of Thrones. Because it's not up her alley at all. But when By the way, is your web WhatsApp open by any chance? Because I hear it ring today. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. It's clear. And it's now. not mine. It's yours. I'm yeah. so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's work. Because yeah, it's still a working day. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Wednesday, friends. We are Wednesday still in lockdown. Um, I understand what you're saying. Uh, a lot of people can't watch violence in mm. that generation. But anyway, um, just an interesting thought. Uh, shall we get on to today's episode? Yeah, episode number thirty-two. Today, Aishi and I will be tickling some topics. <laughs> you want to explain what this is? <laughs> Okay, so um, it is an episode. See, because now we have COVID season, mein, quarantine, mein ghar baithe baithe, kya aapko bhi gyan de, you know, we don't want to give you that much. Gyan. Yeah, karna hai kuch kaam. Take a topic, leke, koi bhi secular god ka naam, aap le lo, jis ka naam. I like it, um, I like it a lot. Uh, to, yeah, today Ayushi and I have prepared some chits for each other. Each chit contains a topic. And we will pick a chit for the other person. And then the other person has to whatever, make a rap, tell a story, talk about whatever they want about the topic. You know, it does, it's like, this is a free flow extempo episode on some topics. And uh, the only way that I'm okay with it is because I technically do have paper with something written on it in front of me. Yeah. So this is like the happiest uh, compromise I can think of. Um, 
also like you said we've written any random topics the other one doesn't know what's on the other uh, what's on yeah, the other yeah, yeah. and i'm just going to like shake and pick one and then you have to talk about it or we can both talk about it together like that was the way to kill time on the show i <laughs> <laughs> sure can't tell them our secrets like this that we are trying to kill time and all uh, okay you know actually why this happened is because we should have crowd sourced a topic a few days ago but we didn't Oopsie. So now if you guys want us to do any episodes just let us know because you know we're quite free. Hum to vele hi baithe hain aapka suggestions ka intezar kar rahe hain so please just bata dijiye. And and please don't say things like can you talk about dating and all because wo to nahi ho raha hamare do lives mein so have nothing to offer sorry this is to those four people like, who DM me saying can you talk about relationships. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, instead, now everyone is right now in a text uh, flirtation ship. I hope. Tasha, you're moving some stuff around and it's making noise. Oh shit! I was so I'm so sorry. I I, I was wiping the uh, dust from my keyboard. Really? Now is when you've chosen to do that. I saw it in one region and I just brushed my hand across and then I realized it made a interference. So anyway, as I was saying. Um, I hope you at least flirting with someone over text Ayushi in these covid times. Uh not really. I mean I wouldn't call it like flirting or I don't know what really to call it. It's kind of just like a couple of every it it, it it's intermittent and I think every couple of days somebody messages me like hey <laughs> it's how is it intermittent intermittent flirting. flirting. This is the IF that's in my life right now. I love it. I love it. Um Every couple day, someone texts like, "Oh, hope you're doing okay. Like, how's it going? What's up?" And it's kind of like now, how much can you keep saying, "Yeah, it sucks, quarantine, this or the other," because I'm trying to find actually, to be honest, I'm trying to find a lot of normalcy in my life and yeah. reestablish a lot of um, like normal routines that I I would have pre lockdown uh, because I think that's the only way to keep me like consistent. and yeah. it's what's working for me i'm not going to say like oh this is what everyone should do because i know there's a lot of people out there who are truly enjoying this free space and time to be creative and that's awesome no mm. doubt but um i'm actually pretty grateful at this specific moment to have enough work from my actual job to uh fill up my day because otherwise as you can tell i'm just practicing accents in the bathroom <laughs> true true that's lovely that's good to hear aishi um 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 on the note of the creativity and all that hmm. i want to do a soft plug for a um, insta live or workshop i'll be conducting this weekend what? for budding actors yeah can you tell me i did i swear i did Okay, we'll have this domestic argument off air once again. I'm so sorry. I didn't tell you. I think I told Ria yesterday. So, are you trying to get me to leave this recording session? No, no, I should not <laughs> be so dramatic. Oh <laughs> But my god. I'll be, so, yeah. I'll be attending. No, you don't have to attend. It's for uh, actors and I guess you can attend it's for anyone who uses their voice and uh, Yeah you are a podcaster so you I mean, by wow, extension you are, are a... digging into this hole <laughs> it's not for Vocal you artist <laughs> it is for you it's for you and everyone else who wants to like be able to speak uh, confidently and loudly is it free which you have no problem with actually yes. that's true free. i don't need i don't need this confidence and volume i if anything i need the opposite <clears throat> yeah shut the f- Up. Okay, chalo ji. Fine. On that note, why don't you start talking? You can pick from my chits. I'm shaking them. Can you hear me shaking them? Yeah. Okay. Shake Stop them. shaking and drop one chit. Okay. I have dropped. Hold on. Hold on. Many dropped. Oops. My bad. And I drop one. Okay. Let's open it. I should have recorded this part on like my phone so we could post that. Oops. Okay. Today's topic for you, Tash, is Australia. Oh my god, Australia. And I would also let you have New Zealand as the, you can talk about the that region, Australia, New Zealand, that. Okay, Ayushi, thank you firstly. I would like to say thanks for this beautiful geographical topic you have chosen <laughs> for me. Um my earliest memories of Australia go back to my childhood. 
when I had never visited, but um, I obviously had family who had visited. So, my house was a koala bear, which I had put on pencil. And that koala bear hugged my pencil. Ko hug karta tha. Since then, when I, since I was a kid, I was like, oh, Australia is a place where there are these koala bears. Um, and kangaroos, of course. We know about those kangaroos. Love a good kangaroo. <laughs> Love a good kangaroo. Um, so that was my early memories of Australia. Then as I grew a little older, I understood, okay, okay, they play cricket. Bhi oh, okay. You know? <laughs> then I was like, uh, okay, okay, they are very popular for cricket along with us. They are also mad. Like this ponting guy, he's a big deal. So this is at that point in life. You know, Beta when you're Ricky. just... Yeah, apna Ricky, apna Ricky. So uh, that was my second uh, brush with Australia, understanding that they play this sport that we are obsessed with. Um, then obviously we reached uh, world geography in school and I understood that Acha, hai, Australia is a small... Uh, Not small. It is a very small uh, continent, but a very large country continent. Very um, nice. That's what I was trying to say. You should not f*** with me. Sorry. You know, you just think you're smarter than me and you're just trying to show off because you've been to Australia and New Zealand both. I've not been to New Zealand. Oh no, lame, lame, lame. Lame, lame. <laughs> lame, lame, lame. Huh. Then what else to say about Australia? Actually, then finally, the sealing the deal was that when I went to college and I actually made friends from Australia. Then I was like, oh, this is real. This is real Australia. And then the best part is that they are Australia days on the same day as our uh, Republic Day. Yes. So, this was very cool, laga, you know, because I was playing Happy Republic Day in college. They were like, Happy Australia Day, mate. Happy Australia Day, mate. Like, cool, cool. We all have that Aap same uh, colonial background. <laughs> yeah, means the Queen ruled over all of us once. <laughs> ah, poor Queen. Now she's in isolation. Yeah. Yeah, isn't everyone? Uh, but yeah, I love Australia. I went once, but didn't miss visit much. I only went to Perth because that's where my friends from college lived. So I went and stayed with them and went to the beach. And the blue water is very blue. And I love that. Great. I like and the it. produce is very fresh. And MasterChef Chef Australia is the best MasterChef out there. Agreed. Just want to say that. That is a 100% fact. And it's not up for debate. <laughs> no, it's not. And what the- would you like to add? <laughs> Um, I have family in Australia and uh, we caught up with them yesterday, which is why it made it onto the chit. It was very, <laughs> like I was just looking around my house, um, house sourcing topics. And I was like, yes. ah, mama is on the line. Australia, um, nice. my, uh, so my cousins live there and I've been twice to obviously visit. And for us, it was a lot of family kind of a thing. Um, mm. I have great memories of it. The first time I went was just after we finished our 10th standard boards. So I c- remember getting my grades uh, when we were on, the, we were driving up the Gold Coast and we were staying at this random hotel and my entire dad side family was there as well because we did a, we did a oh. dad and mom side family reunion in Australia many years ago. And you know, my dad's yeah, yeah. massive, not, I mean, not like size wise in numbers. Uh, <laughs> sorry. So Everyone was there and it was the most nerve wracking thing because imagine you're in the 10th period and every single one of your like cousins and aunts and they're all already doctors or in med school or like, you know, it, they were doing physics or in law. And I was like, mm-hmm. I just need to make sure that I got back into 11th st- standard cathedral. <laughs> um, but anyway, I did fine. It was great. And I remember having a good time uh, over there. Uh, yeah, great country, great continent. Um, New Zealand. Great produce, fresh vegetables. Love that shit. Yes. And currently I am binging on this old HBO show, which I think Tashi would love. It's called Flight of the Concords. Uh, oh, uh-huh, yes, of course. And of course. they are two guys, Brett and Jermaine from New Zealand. Brett and Jermaine from New Zealand. Brett and Jermaine from New Zealand. Nice, nice. Yeah. So um, great show. It's very kooky comedy. Um, but yeah, nice continent, big fan. I would give it a solid 8 on 10 as a topic. Jug Jug Geo Australia. And New Zealand. And New Zealand. Okay, great. Now your turn. You want to talk about how there's the word land in New Zealand? <laughs> I can't. I'm dying. Oh my God. Are you <laughs> I, I have no part of this. <laughs> like if you say New Zealand, New Zealand, it's like no. Yeah. But then, anyway, 
But isn't there any country with the land in the end? No, Switzerland. Switzerland, Iceland, Greenland. Yeah, just Timberland. Okay. <laughs> Who's concert I'm going for? I'm a Timberland concert. Timber Switzerland. Sorry. Wow. I'm stopping. I'm stopping now. I have stopped. Good. I've stopped. I'm glad. Um. Okay. I'm shaking the chits. You can't hear. I can. can you? Oh, I'm shaking. Drop. Oh, fuck. What? Fell on the floor. One fell on the floor. Should I take the floor one? Okay. Or should I take the table one? Uh, table one, please. Okay, table one. Wow, Ayushi. Even in this distance, you don't want to touch my floor. Oh, your topic, Ayushi, is pre-wedding photo shoots. <laughs> that is so obscure. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay, pre-wedding photo shoots. This is how I feel about them. Is that they're not necessary <laughs> and stop doing it and um, like I I don't understand them. I guess okay if we're gonna do both sides of this because you sold this entire episode to me as debates so far. Yes. Um, the other I, I would say the other side of it possibly would be maybe for photographers and filmographers as like a. Uh, career it's more job opportunities for them so I guess great for you and Mm -hmm. if we're just creating avenues where people can make content so they can share it and all the people that go into creating that content if you're getting something out of it you're getting business money remuneration out of it great but I don't like what's the point you're gonna take pictures at your wedding anyway right and this pre-wedding photo shoot where does it start slash end it's such a like there's no, there's no control. There are no rules. You have one uh, during your engagement. Now people call photographers to their engagement so that they can photograph their engagement. Then after the engagement, you do another shoot, which is a pre-wedding shoot. What? So what was the point of the engagement pictures? Please explain to me. And then now you have this pre-wedding shoot where you've all got, you've gotten dressed up. And you're wearing the ring and you're doing those ring pictures and like your ring pictures are the best. Yeah, sure you and give them a separate moment later. Yeah, I'll get to that. And then you're in all these different locations. People go like, as they say, outstation to take these pictures. <laughs> or like, randomly, they'll be in like some really stark background of perhaps a slum or something. And then you're in very glamorous clothes. And then you're against this broken, like dilapidated building. And you're just taking it. What are you trying to show? Like I... I'm so confused. And then you get to the wedding and then you take wedding pictures as, which is fine. That's normal, natural. And it's it's your wedding. You should take pictures. But then people take pre-wedding pictures at the wedding, which is before the actual ceremony slash after the ceremony, the bride and groom take pictures together in their bridal clothes. Yeah. So how many sets of pictures do you need? Is anything changing? Are you are you doing like other than outfit changes? What is truly the the people are the same? The ring is the same. I've now seen it twelve times. <laughs> like, no, I do not agree with this concept as a concept. Sorry, and the Lovely. amount of money, the amount of money that photographers and like the team can charge for this now and now I, I know it's going to go into a whole like oh everyone deserves to be paid their sh- uh, you know their share and work and they absolutely do but is it a necessary expense yes that's what I mean is it a necessary expense and I think people now do it because other people have done it so you have oh, yeah, to it's it. become a trend now everything is fucking trendy and cool and hot no yeah and now you have to call a makeup artist and a hairstylist and then you source clothes and you Also, I just think it's such a level, you're giving yourself so much self-importance. Like you've taken these pictures, okay, chalo, you took them. Now you're going to f***ing share them? (laughs) Aishi, come on. That's why they've taken them, let them live. (laughs) I'm not for this. And I have friends who did it. And I disagreed at that time as well. (laughs) I will end this tirade by saying, my final word on this though is, each their own it's your journey it's your love it's it's your marriage and wedding so how you choose to document it is entirely your choice as long as you're paying your um whoever's involved you're paying them a fair wage and a commensurate to their work and worth and be respectful be nice what else can i say other than also brackets you suck 
There was some other notification that just came. That's my email now. How can I do anything about that? I'm sorry. Shut the email tab for now. It's shut. Okay, I'll... Oh, it's your it's your mail from the ah. It's like my uh, my my computer mail. I can't help that. Why do you log in that stupid mail? I never use that. I find that mail very annoying. But I it's it's my work email comes directly there. No, I'm not going to sign into like the portal each time. Anyway, Anyway, yeah, pre-wedding shoots to each their own. Ayushi is not a fan of them. If you're <laughs> going to be marrying Ayushi, please understand there will be no free pre-wedding shoot. There will be some kind of vibe shoot. Ayushi will take a picture of one finger of yours against the background, one toe, the <laughs> ring itself inside a cup of coffee. Never. Yes, <laughs> never. I would never take a picture of the ring and then to put that up. Like, I just, I don't know. I don't like it as a concept. True. But that's okay. just, like, look, that's very clearly just me. Yeah, like, you know, there are people who enjoy it and who who got cute pictures out. Look, I'm not saying that when you get engaged or if you want to just take pictures of the two of you, you you can't or you shouldn't. I'm not saying no, but I think this these concept shoots is what I have a problem with. Aishi, I'm dying to do a concept shoot. Let's do one together. You and me will do a pre-wedding shoot. Okay, scratch everything I said. Let's do that. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> I have a great idea. For this, you know that end scene of Made in Heaven where she's sitting in the bathtub. Oh with- my God, I should stop it. I, I want to do that. Scratch everything. I'm a hypocrite. Let's do the concept shoot. I'm screaming. Okay, yeah, anyone who wants to reach out to style us like Shobita Dulipala in the uh, Made, Made in Heaven season finale, please hit us up. Okay, cool. Now it's your turn. I'm shaking, 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 shaking. Uh, Check that. Okay. Check that. Batch. One fell and one fell down. Which one do you want? The floor one or the table one? I want the floor one because I'm a bitch from the floor. But I would say I'm down to earth. But let's take a break before we open that shit up, should we? Okay, cool. Okay, friends. See you after the break, and you get to hear me talk. Filter coffee is a fascinating beverage. You need to pick the right beans, blend them in the right proportion, roast them to perfection, and slow brew at the right temperature to get the perfect cup. Which is exactly like great conversations as well. You need to track down the most interesting minds, get them into their zone, and settle down for an unhurried, unscripted chat. And coffee for me is always, always, always best enjoyed with friends. I'm Karthik Nagarajan, and do share my table as I meet some of the most interesting people I know and sit them down for a strong cup of coffee and an even stronger conversation. Join me every Wednesday for a freshly brewed episode. This is not Frappe. This is the Filter Coffee Podcast. Hello! Oh God, so loud, so loud, so loud, Dash. Sorry, I do apologize. No, it's because I'm wearing headphones, no, right now. So it's like, it's mind blasting. Okay. Mind blasting. As you know, she chose the floor chit before the break and I'm going to open that up. The topic is borders. I feel like this is too intense for me, Aishi. Why? It can be salwar ka border, sari ka border, country ka border. It could be any border. Border the I movie, will border. Talk about the, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I will begin with border the movie border. Is that Because that's movie? where I first learned the word border. That's the first time you heard the word border, Tash, really? Aishi, we were really young. You're acting damn smart if you're saying you knew the word border before the film border release. We were like two or three years old when it came out. Really? What's wrong with you, Aisha? I'm going to Google it right now to prove you wrong. Please go ahead. I didn't think we were that young. Isn't Border... Border is a 1997 film. I was literally four years old. You were five oh, years okay. old. No, I thought Border was a movie that had that song. Which it pee. And they say, Ah, te. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Why do I know this song? <laughs> Aishi, what do you mean? You can't be ashamed. Every Indian knows this song. Not ashamed. I'm just, I'm surprised that these many years later, I still know it. You you didn't say the correct lyrics, but that's okay. You tried. Why? It says, Chitthi aati hai, hume tadpaati hai. Correct. So but then, that's midway through the song. Wow. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. You are pretty. Yeah. No, I, I, I want I, you to continue. This is all part of your topic time. 
Oh yeah, of course. So the first time I learned the word border was from the movie Border, Ayushi, because I was four years old, and I'm sorry I wasn't reading about borders before that. No, you dumbass. It's not about reading, but you know, coloring within the border, the outline, like that way, border also. My mom never said color within the border. I didn't learn the word border. Sorry. Okay. I'm upset now at my own mother for not. <laughs> <the> <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on, Sunny Deol, stay on track. Sunny Deol taught me border, and I was like, "Thik hai, achhi film hai, you know, Desh Bhakti wali feeling aa rahi hai for sure." Um, but then I couldn't really understand why these borders existed, and I was like, "Who has made them?" Then when you see on Earth, there's no real border, uh, but now there is, of course. People have made it. Now um, I wish that everyone maintain their border, stay inside your border. Absolutely, you know, in a time like this, <laughs> it's very important to just make a box and stay in that box. No need to go out of the box nowadays. So let me just tell you, this topic was brought to you by yesterday. I went to get groceries and I stood inside a box. So I was like, ah, border. Oh. Put it down. Aishi, you are so inspired by the outside world. I I had no other words for you. That's why. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and then, oh, okay. You know what? I really have nothing else to say about border. Sari borders are cool. You know, borders in general are cool. You can like jazz up an old outfit with a new border. Come on. Okay. What else did I have about border? What was I thinking when I thought border? I was just thinking. There was a bookshop border. called Borders also in Singapore when I used to study. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. I know. I, I know about there. that. Um, yeah. Border, border. I am slowly with each day getting border. <laughs> Very nice. When I feel thirsty, when I feel thirsty, I drink some water. <laughs> also, during this lockdown, I'm getting broader. <laughs> That's a very sign. She don't lie. I know you're working out like a pro every day. We are. We both are. So, but I. I do feel I'm getting slightly broader. Anyway, so if this topic time is closed, it's my turn now to pick. Okay, I'm going to shake it up, shake it up like a Polaroid, shake it, shake it. Okay. Stop. Stopped. Okay, what fell? What? Do, which one has? We all three fell. This time. <laughs> Open up one of them. Oh, Aishi, it's a little um, it's gender equality. Wow, I've given you such rando topics that you've given me like specific, um, you know, conversation starters. Um, okay, gender. Yeah, equality. border was terrible. No offense. Hello. No, I'm giving you the silent treatment. <gasps> I knew when I thought there was a lag first, and then I was like, no, 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 there's no lag. I'm sure she's only <laughs> not talking to me. <laughs> How oh, well you knew us? Okay. Um, what was it? Gender equality. I mean, I I don't want to debate this topic because I don't think there is another side to it. I think gender equality across the board is just the equal to sign. You know, everyone, same thing. Um, yeah. I. This sounds very like as if I have nothing to say on this topic. I think the it's the opposite is because I have so much to say on the topic. I don't know where really to start. It's like a hairball, okay. you know, like where which how do you pull one out? Uh, okay, so let me specific make it specific for you. Yeah, maybe in a COVID time like this, a quarantine season where everyone is uh, whatever quarantined with uh, their family members. How does one bring gender equality into the home in a time like this? Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, oh, like, if we're, if we're yeah. you know going by, let's just pick India maybe instead of going worldwide. No, no, worldwide. Hello, we are talking about India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm saying if we're looking at a normal or stereotypical general Indian family structure, usually a lot of the house responsibilities fall to the women, whether they're working or not. It does generally fall to the like you know the woman of the house. If your family structure is different, please let us know. That would be so cool. Yeah, and, we'd love to read. It. Yeah, and we'd love to also share these alt family structures. I can't believe we're calling them alt equal family structures. Is what we'll call them. Um, but yeah, considering I'll talk about my situation. My mom is definitely the person who runs the house. Even though she works, she does run the house. Mainly because I think if my dad ran the house, it would be a disaster. Same. Um, same. 
she is the one who's totally on top of making sure that we have enough of everything that we need um she's the one who remembers when the last shop was done and you know when uh, what needs restocking and since we're cooking for like a lot of the staff in our building as well cuz they can't go home what extra is needed as well she's kind of on top of that so i would say in terms of a general rule it's it must be frustrating for her because now she has a full house constantly to maintain and it must be hard on a lot of the people who run homes on a general basis to have everyone in the family sitting on top of their head being like oh now there's three meals to cook or there's children to occupy or like homeschool yeah. homeschooling to do and i mean i tip my hat off to any homemaker or person who runs their home because it's not easy at all i don't think i'm even ready for it which uh, but what we are doing to kind of help I, I, if she hears this episode, she's gonna like say this is slander and lies. <laughs> But um, what we're trying to do is, I try to make one meal every other day. So oh, nice! How generous of you! Shut up. Um, so that there's some sort of alleviation in that way. So I take it over and just like, okay, this isn't that. Like either breakfast or either lunch or dinner. Breakfast, not a meal. Um, we're all taking care of our own space like so my dad makes his bed every day i know this sounds really bad i'm sorry but uh laundry we're taking turns because it shouldn't be just dumped on either the house help or one person as such absolutely so we're definitely taking turns doing all of this but i will say my mom carries the most weight of making sure that there are three meals and that there is because there are different loads to take no i see your mom I, i'm just going to point like jump in at this point yeah. and say the men, the physical load everyone might be sharing but the mental load is still all her that's what i'm trying to say i'm sorry you said it much better yeah. I, the mental load is still on her even though physically we're definitely doing more than we would on a normal yeah, basis on a normal day because i think it's also purely out of the fact that you're home right so if there's dusting to be done or like mopping up some area to be done or cleaning you know cleaning up after every meal like that's all my responsibility which is fine with me i have no issue at all but it's still very small compared to the fact that if i go to the kitchen and i'm like oh i need to eat something there will be some option for me or you know she's stocked up the freezer with different sauces and pastes and stuff so that we have options to eat healthy food throughout this uh, time and she's the one making sure that the meals are going down for the watchman in the building and some of the staff that lives there needs to be taken care of which is obviously our responsibility as a building like i have no um argument there but that's all being done by her she's the one who tries you know she's on this chat of many other ladies called resourceful girls i think lots of love it lots of south bombay aunties mommies are on it i want to be on this group please uh, ask, yeah. ask sanj her mom is the admin she'll add you um why so in terms of like checking in on everyone and even in terms of checking in on the family like she's the one who calls everyone and makes sure she's one who texts she's the one who's like um you know just like you said the mental i think her mental burden is definitely higher during this time and i would like to say that that's really commendable and i appreciate it and appreciate all such people who are taking on this thing this is not so much about gender equality as it's about i feel bad for my mom fair sorry i mean same so do i um uh yeah the topic is very large but i think everyone can only this like introspect based on their immediate circumstances and experiences because yeah of course at large gender equality doesn't exist and we are all trying to bridge that gap yeah right yeah i know i do i think we've talked about that enough but it literally does start from one's own home and uh, i mean i my mom and dad are living alone at this time yeah. there's no staff also yeah so they Uh, I mean, my mom was complaining, being like, "Um, um," and then finally, I guess they had a bit of a, uh, whatever talk about it, and then my dad has decided, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you. So yesterday, she did the jhadu and he did the pocha, uh, for the first time at age fifty six, a man did pocha, which is commendable, I guess. But I don't want to be applauding that either. Um, but I'm glad he helped her out at least. But my, um, uh, no, that. I'm saying these are all, I guess, steps. And actually, what I hope is that whatever um, quote unquote progress 
has been uh, yeah. made during this time of like uh, pitching in and making sure yeah, that home is an equal is an equal space where everyone has to carry their own weight. I I hope that kind of at least some parts of it stay on the other side of this because otherwise this would have been for naught. For sure. And um, like a cute cute little fun fact: my nana nani Please. my nana nani don't have any staff right now because they oh my god yeah and because they only like temporary staff like as in um. Like yeah, yeah, time time. Stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay. They don't, Not they don't like yeah. anyone staying in their house, which is like it drives us insane because how, because they live really far from us. Again, their choice. Very stubborn people. So they don't live really far. They live about a forty-five minute drive. Yeah, but what I mean is, in terms of an emergency, it's not like it's I'm not right near them, right? So, right. and if they have no one living with them, it just kind of is. It's a little unsettling. That's all. But um, so right now they have no one, and so my nana every other day does like dusting, jhadu, and little bit pota in the house in the main oh area. And my nani does all the cooking because my nani has a really bad shoulder. So my nana is like, no, I can't expect her to do any physical work. So he oh does all God. of that, and she, um, you know, she does the cooking, and like I'm, I'm glad even at eighty. Five eighty six. He understands that there are limitations, and, amazing. and that he has to do something to make sure that it's not all on her when they don't have any help. Beautiful. I love it, Ayushi. Thank you for that story. I love your nana, nana. They're really cute. They really are. Okay. okay. Topic time. Oh, it's your turn. Fine. So yeah, shake those chairs. Shake it, shake it, and all, okay, all, all, fell, and all fell, all fell, all fell. Wait. Hold on. Pick the one on the leftmost side. Okay, cool. That was nice. <laughs> okay, this is just really random, but um, fake parody news shows, like uh, you know, like a John Oliver show or like the Daily Show or you know those like uh, Hasan Minaj's show, which is like news but it's comedy, I guess. I got it. I got it. I, I think got that's it. a fab fab concept, and a lot of Indian journalists are doing it unknowingly. <laughs> <laughs> <You're joking. laughs> hilarious, hilarious, hilarious. वहाँ तो मतलब comedy script writers होते हैं यहाँ तो अपने आप comedy हो रही है. Um, love it. I love those shows. What do I say? I don't really watch any of them regularly, but I love a good John Oliver every now and then. Um, I think it's very difficult to write that kind of content, yes. and you have to. It has to be so well researched and. Uh, factual, but also like comic, and f-ing writing comedy is one of the hardest things anyway. So imagine this layer of comedy in current affairs. I find it. I mean, I tip my hat to them. Um, I should. I think you should start your own uh, daily show. Actually, the reason I picked this for you was because we we've had a conversation about this earlier. I guess maybe we don't actively remember, it or you don't actively remember it. Was saying. I feel like you're pointing at me when I say we don't remember. Yes, I am. No, I wanted. I thought what you would bring up was, and you did technically, is that how hard it is to write comedy. Yeah, and people don't give it enough credit that these shows that they think is just like punchline after punchline, it's so 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 much work to make real life sound not only humorous but also informative at the same time. Of course, it's like I think one of the hardest genres to write, perhaps. Yes, and I think every time you and I decide, we're like, oh, let's let's try writing something. Let's try writing something real or funny or some. And it's you to get that light, pithy back and forth. It's not as easy as people think. And yeah. I think it, because I've been consuming so much of this uh, content in general, I feel like comedy is possibly the hardest thing to do. And I wonder why things like the Oscars and like. The BAFTAs or whatever, and Emmys—they don't really value it, or they don't credit it as much. It's just put in like comedy or musical, and it's like, what the f- is that supposed to mean? Mm. And I—I I don't know. I think it's really sad because drama. I'm not saying drama isn't difficult. Of course it is, and there are all these character actors. Which, by the way, Dash, I was meaning to discuss this with you on another side. Imagine oh having God. to. Create a space called character actors because what are you trying to say is the other actors cannot act. Yeah, so about this, I want to have a chat with you. <laughs> like when someone um, calls you a character actor, it's like, oh, he's a character. It actor. means you can act, yes. And no, and it's the new way of describing. Like, so there's hot people, and then there are people that can act. 
Yes, Ayushi, correct. It's not new. This is a tale as old as time in India. It's been u- being used forever. Heroine, hero, character actor. And this is it. <laughs> and junior artist. We have four levels. And I can't, I can't believe it because the more I've thought about this as a concept <laughs> in my head, I was like, you have hot people and then you have people who can act. And so you just, and the people who can act are just okay being called character actors. I mean, I'm totally not okay. So, um, yeah, I never want to be called a character actor, even though I'm a great actor who can act and I'm hot. So I guess they don't know what box to put me in, man. Yeah, but I think it's just weird, isn't it? Like, I don't agree with it as a concept. Yeah, but it's a concept (laughs) that exists and it's just wild to me. Yes, Ayushi, but that way even like junior artist it's a very rude word. Well, okay. I, I do feel like, okay, if, if you're saying junior artist, it, maybe it's just to signify that the person is young. This is in his first couple of movies. No, Ayushi, there are like a zillion old people in junior artist category. This junior's oh. card. This is like, junior artist means you're in the background. Extras. Extras are called junior artists in India. You know this or no? Oh, no, I did not know this. I thought junior artist is just like a young person. No, dear. So you want to call the kid in Tare's, I mean, for a junior artist? No, he's a child actor. Aishi, what's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, no. I <laughs> made a grave mistake. <laughs> you made a grave mistake. You know, okay, okay, okay. Hey, let me remind you. Uh, you remember that movie, uh, Om Shanti Om, right? How could I forget? So the first, the pre-incarnate, not the reincarnate, the pre-incarnate Shah Rukh. Huh. When he's in Who wants to be an actor? Correct. And he's a junior artist. Remember, he's screaming Bhago and the guys like just run across the scream, frame and scream it. And he's like, no, I'll do it in all these new ways. But oh, so junior artists try to get some screen time also. If they are Shah Rukh Khan, I guess, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, child actors are not the same as junior artists. I'm glad you've understood that today. If I learned anything today, it was that. Yeah, lovely. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, news parody shows, I guess they're hard to write. Don't shit on them. It takes a lot of effort to make them. Yeah, man. We respect those guys. Yes. Great respect for all these people. Um, okay. And then we also talked about character actors, junior artists. Uh, my turn. You have to pick a chit. Yes. Uh, she, there's only one chit left. So. Wow. You only, me only made three. You made five. I made six. You said to make six. Joking, I'm just messing with you. I have six. Such a liar. Wow, what, what did you just do? <laughs> I'm creating sound effects to make it seem like I'm scrambling around to get six chips. It sounds like you dropped the laptop. No, I didn't. I'm doing more sound effects. It's okay, okay it's I'm okay. done. Okay, you're just lying. You have one chit left. See, you love this chit. So I have no problem with admitting it's only one chit. Okay, fine. What is it? I want you to Aishi talk about a topic called new age baby names. <laughs> you can't see me, but I'm cheering. <laughs> this is this is you know how people have you know how people have triggers, right? Like <laughs> what, what, my triggers. Uh, I have a very short list. I have a very short list of triggers. This one is in the top four. <laughs> I have only five triggers. This is in the top. This is number four. Love it. New age baby names. Okay. How shall I structure this argument? <laughs> okay. Here's the thing. You, as a disclaimer, you can't just take a bunch of consonants and then sprinkle A's wherever you want and then make a new name. Like Kamara is yeah. not a name. It's a room. Like, Kamara, oh my god, who has named their child Kamara? I don't know, but I promise you somebody's going to hear this episode and be like, Kamara, I love it. It's an Egyptian lotus Nile flower. Like, no, it's not. It's so. not. But I mean, there are some real crunchy granola people out there. But no, but my problem with this is that you've taken normal names and you've decided that you either want to, I, I don't know, is it like to make them cooler or more Western or more modern? So you just make a name up and then you, you give it to your child and then you present your child to the world as if like, mm. that sound, that sound that I just made is the sound that people have when they <laughs> these names. Like, her name is Aleava. Hmm. <laughs> it's like you forgot the last two letters in alleviate. <laughs> <laughs> you were just looking around the room and you're like, what is this? Gross thing. Her name is Christina. And you're like, this is not okay. This is not okay. And 
Do you know that by respelling names with a different bunch of letters doesn't change the name? Such as, give us an example. Come like, on. How many ways can you spell Ria? True. You know, I'm 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 a bit done. Like I think <laughs> there are only three spellings. I'll be honest with you. I think there are maximum four spellings because exactly. our friend has a weird spelling also. Yes. Yeah, so we have R E A. Fine. R I Y A. Fine. And R E R H E A. Right. And R I A. R I A is a legit old one. Also. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's four ways of spelling Ria. I yeah, because know. R E A is the most new age one of that. I would say. Sorry, Ria. Huh? Our friend. Yes. But now, I've seen recently there was somebody and. Her name tag said Rhea, R E Y A H, Rhea. Okay, and so I thought it was Rhea, like ray of sunshine, Rhea. So I was like, oh, hello, okay. little Rhea. And her mother said her name is Rhea. I had to bite my hand to stop myself from slapping this woman. <laughs> Why? But actually, <laughs> what is Rhea if it's going to be Rhea? Like because what? if it react, it should be Rhea. I wanted to react on her face. Lol. But there are so, so many names, like the amount of like Samara, Amara, Kamara, Araira. What is there's just no there's no Araira. I love it, Araira. There's no <gasps> there's no end of names. You've just taken consonants and put A's everywhere. And you're like this is a name now, and the world just has to accept it because trigger number five, everything goes. Lol. Next thing you know, there'll be a kid called Corona. What do you yeah, mean? Next yeah. thing, there probably already is. It's probably yeah. like, and um something that I like my secondary quest annoyance with this is when when I see people um in India do it specifically it's look I'm not saying that you don't have the ability to name your child whatever you want to name your child Michael go ahead like you like the name that's fine it's your child this is the yeah. problem that I guess my premise is I'm angry but you do whatever you want <laughs> um is that we actually have a treasure trove of names. Oh my god, yes, absolutely. There's there's a lot of names that are not I and I don't mean to say like Hindu specific but in terms of India specific regardless of your faith or your religion or whatever it is, there are so many names um either from like uh, characters in history, characters in religion, in legend, in tales, and each one of these names which I think is a really beautiful thing is each one of our names in our country means something it has a legacy it has a origin or it it stands for something it stands for a um a quality or a trait and i like that when parents pick a name they pick this thing because they're like oh this is a trait that i i wish that my child would have or that this is something that i wish for my child and in, in his or her life going forward yeah and i've always liked that idea because to be very honest with everyone i didn't always like my name i oh I, no i'm not i wasn't a fan of the name ayushi and i didn't i didn't quite get on board with it and because um when i i looked at my baby book the other name as the option was anushka which i thought was a far hotter name you know oh, I, just this you think that now we've associated hot girls with anushka agreed. anushka yeah. totally agreed and that's why i wanted to be an other i want to be a hot girl but then i kind of i think very not recently a couple of years ago i had the conversation with my mom and i was just like how come you went with ayushi and she was like you know it just means a person with a long life and why wouldn't i want that for you and just that one simple sentence kind of made me feel like oh my god imagine a mother holding a child a father holding a child and thinking that you know parents I feel all their hopes and dreams and aspirations when they see their newborn is they're so so big that they decide that okay what are you going to be called for the rest of your life and to the parents who go with hardik I don't know why you did that I'm so sorry to all the hardiks out there Yes but other than that I like that our names have sort of like that etymology behind them and they have a story and they have a meaning and so to parents now i just hope that whatever name you pick you you picked it because it meant something to you and not just because it was cool on goop yeah yeah that's that that's my thing and maybe i'm prejudging parents or i'm post judging them and i mean i guess just off the top i'll say blanket sorry but like <laughs> i'll just say blanket i like blanket right. michael jackson named his child blanket oh my god yeah what the f 
was that about and and gwyneth named her child apple and then the other one is moses imagine how apple feels or imagine how moses feels like he has so much to live up to and this chicky just has to be like a nice fruit very weird very weird and who was that who named that child pilot inspector with a k i don't know but anisa told us about this this is this running joke since like school for 10 years somebody has had a kid named pilot inspector which i can't yeah I can't. so i get it wanting to name your child after i don't know these new age names bother me a little bit because they're just so random and then actually what possibly what bothers me more is not so much the child because the child did nothing it's the parents that say this with that level of you know entitlement or that kind of that oh, oh yeah mm, i this sound mm. <laughs> i named my child this really obscure haitian name because you know she was conceived haitian <laughs> she was conceived near a beach oh which beach you know marine drive it's a beat <laughs> like oh. so what is the name wave wave lair <laughs> lair i i don't mind the name lair but lair is a nice name actually lair is, name a, nice name. Lair. Lair is, a, is a cute name i'm going to put it to my list of baby names that i have on my phone lovely um cute i'm great um i i should we talk about names we like then <laughs> oh yeah. so we can stop i guess we could talk about names that we like um I I really have always liked the name Mira. Mira to is just a very nice name. And I was convinced that if I had a a daughter I would name her Mira. I just like the name. It's pretty. Beauty, beauty, beauty. That's the name I like. What's the name you like? Um I really like the name um just for me come on name. Yeah, wow. yeah do, it, do it, do it, do it. Uh oh actually no I'm not I'm not kidding you but I I really liked uh, Panchali and I thought after like you know that was Draupadi's OG's name Ah Panchali. when you read that book you were really inspired Yeah and I thought chalo main apni beti ko Panchali bulaungi but it's a lot It's a lot It's a lot <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she'll be able to deal Panchali um, Panchali it's a lot and it's just right now reminding me of uh, Pushpavali Oh yeah, Pancha, Panchali. I mean, I screamed at every morning to wake that bitch up and send her to school. Valli, Valli, hey, Panchali. Your, your Valli. friend Vidyut keeps coming up on my um, Instagram explore page now because of how much you've been sharing him, I think, and how much I've just been saying Pushpavali to my phone. So it's just picking I it up. You should follow Vidyut. Everyone should follow Vidyut. He's fab. Uh, he was very good, Valli. He's very good. I'm not some roadside man. <laughs> I'm your fiance. He's so cute in the uh, and you know actually you know I have to say now this is when it comes down to acting and the funny story here is Sumuki was like no Vidyut you can't audition for this role this is not the Vidyut we have in mind can you imagine Oh really Yeah and Vidyut basically forced himself to audition for this show he was like no Sumuki I'm an actor I can do this blah 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 So oh he was so good Exactly and this is why I think casting directors and creators need to give like Yeah, show sure, you have a way in your head how this character is supposed to be, but maybe if you tell a good actor to try it, they will do something good. And also, I think a cool takeaway possibly could be that um, sometimes you have to push for yourself and campaign for absolutely, yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. And yes, that's a good takeaway. We learned that from my friend Vidhi today, and Ayushi for thank you for deconstructing that. Yeah, and like I because I and I think I learned this from you is that you have to be your own cheerleader because sometimes the world or your family or friends aren't going to be that. But if you have faith in yourself, then you should push yourself forward. You should need you be your own agent. Damn right, girl. You be your own Amara, Kazara, Kazia, Malia. <laughs> मलिया पे मत जाना मिशेल दीदी को देखा है कितनी सुंदर है <laughs> Marakshi, your audio is going through the roof, Aishi. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The waves are like exiting the waveform frame or whatever. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. I'm done. 
I'm done. On that note, I think we should end this episode, which was just literally nothing. It's 50 minutes of nothing. Tickle a topic, guys. Use a game you can play with your friends. You will understand more interesting things about the world and your friends. And family. I think we should, we should, I think I'm going to play tickle a topic with my family today. Being like, oh, I love it. Let's, yeah. let's get it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, guys. Uh, we'll catch you next week. Uh, hopefully, I, I do think though, if you're listening to this and you have some topics that you would like to, us to discuss, which either could be more concrete or more structured, um, please, please, please let us know because we'd be happy to do them. I have, a, I have extra time right now to research and I, <laughs> you guys know how I just kind of get off on that shit. So let's get on it. Um, yes, you can find more amazing podcasts and shows on the IVM network. You can follow them at IVM podcasts. IVM yeah. on Twitter and Instagram. And then personally, I am at Ayushi A9 on uh, Instagram, at just Ayushi on Twitter. And I'm on House Party also. Get involved. Oh my God, should we do a House Party with all our fans? I think we should do a House Party. If you if you find us on House Party, um, you no, can add us. add us. And maybe we can chat. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. We'll because, you we'll know, see. I have that fear of murderers. But yeah, we'll see. My parents were like, delete house party yesterday because there was some yeah, fear yeah, yeah, of it I being. Yeah, I saw. Okay, thank you for listening, everybody. In these times, again, stay at home if you can afford to. And if you have, I mean, not if you can afford to. I mean, you must stay at home unless it's absolutely necessary to step out. And if you um, can afford to um, share your wealth share. and spread your wealth, in this time, there are a lot of good people doing uh, real work on the ground. And I mean, I don't even think we need to plug anyone specific. There's just a lot of options. No, no, we don't there. want to plug anybody. You yeah. find your own, you do your own, do your bit, help out. Help out at home, help out at, at the community and society yeah. and the world and at large. Something that I read was definitely like help out with the communities that are around you. So that's direct um, and a direct effect, but also the communities that might be reaching out to like people in the hinterlands in rural parts of the country, because they're possibly the ones who will not receive direct donation from wealthier societies around them just by not being around them. So I think that was a really fair point made by Ishan Javeri. He was, you know, a cathedral friend. So... Try to find maybe some like that and donate as much or little as you can. I think every bit counts. But on that note, I am going to go eat now. Bye. Bye, friends. Take it easy. Stay stylish. What? <laughs> cut, Tash. Cut it. Cut it. I'm going to cut it now. It's cut. Okay, bye. I love you all. Do you wish you were smarter? Well, so do we. But the next best thing? We could make you sound smarter. And to help you with this endeavor, we are Simplified. A podcast uh, that attempts to break down the complex world around you with a little knowledge, a lot of poor jokes and a ton of random trivia. Episodes out every Monday. On the IVM podcast app or wherever you get your podcasts. See See ya. Hi, I'm Satyajit. Hi, I'm Racheta. We are from the Open Library Project and we host a podcast called Paperback. Paperback is a podcast where we engage with stalwarts and experts from various industries suggesting non-fiction titles that contributed to their journey in a big way. We've had guests like Anjali Rana, Dr. Marcus Rani, Dr. Swati Loda, Ambi Parmeswaran, Apurva Damani and many more on our show Paperback. Find new episodes every Wednesday on IVM Podcast app, website or wherever you listen to podcasts.